let me introduce you to Sony's PMW200. This is the direct replacement for the PMW EX1 and EX1R. How can you tell? Well, it's $62.99, just like the cost of the EX1 camera. Looks like we might have uh, gone too quickly. Let's, let's check in with Debbie with a question coming in from the chat room. Before you even get into that, Cliff wants to know if the PMW is 10-bit SDI out like the EX1R. Thank you for watching the show, Cliff. Thank you for sending your question to us. The question was, is it a 10-bit output on the HD-SDI connector? And the answer is yes. Out of the HD-SDI connector, you've got 10-bit 422 HD-SDI. And that's the same whether you're a 1920 by 1080 or, or 1280 by 720. Thank you very much for your question, Cliff. I appreciate it. All right, so as we mentioned, direct replacement for the PMW EX1R. Similar form factor without that cool rotating handle, but um, I don't know how much use you really made out of that cool rotating handle to begin with. A couple of improvements, wider viewing angle on the LCD viewfinder, a much smarter power system. We've just got on and off. There's no uh, guesswork as to whether or not you're in thumbnail mode or camera mode, and we'll touch on that a little bit later. A couple other improvements over the PMW EX1R. We already mentioned the HD-SDI output, but you've also got two more BNC connectors here, Genlock and Timecode. And you can set that timecode to be either in or out. A lot of my customers thought that they had to go up to an EX3 to get the timecode in the Genlock. No longer the case. You can now get timecode and Genlock right out of the PMW200. If you did want to connect a paint box, however, remote input, you still will have to go to an EX3 or above. No paint box connection to the PMW200. All right. Um, another sort of jarring difference between the 200 and its, and its uh, younger brothers, older brothers, the EX1 and EX3, is that you can record in 422 codec right to the internal cards on the camera. So rather than just the uh, 35 megabit 420 color space XD Cam EX codec, the PMW200 has a 422 color space, 50 megabit per second codec. It's the same codec that you record on the PMW700, the optical disc cameras. So you're getting all of the bit rate that you need out of, out of sort of broadcast cameras in that handheld form factor. Now, certain other manufacturers have offered the same 50 megabits per second in a small form camera, but those offerings are on a 1 3rd inch chip. The Sony PMW200, half inch diagonal chip. So, so a lot more surface area. You're also on the world famous Exmor sensors. So basically, in the handheld Camera, camera space. This is the largest and the most sensitive camera that will get the largest sensor and the most sensitive sensor that will give you a 50 megabit per second 422 color space recording. All right, before we go on, let's, let's go back to Debbie with another question coming in from the internet. Cliff wants to know, he said the EX1R was a Sony Cine Alta branded camera. Is the PMW200 a Cine Alta branded camera or not? Cliff, I really appreciate your question. Um, the question is, PMW X1R is Cine Alta. Is the, is, the, is the 200 also a Cine Alta? Yes, it is in the Cine Alta line. I don't see the logo on it, but definitely, um, definitely a Cine Alta camera. How can you tell? Well, it's got, <laughs> it's got, it's inherited its hyper gammas and cine gammas directly from the HDWF 900. So for instance, when you're setting up your picture profiles and you're stepping through your gamma options, apart from just sort of the standard gammas, Right, so standard gamma 5 will give you that rec 709 sort of television look. There are some hyper gammas. So there are four hyper gammas that, that are included in this camera. They come directly from the EX1 and the EX3. Hyper gammas 1 and 2 give you real extended data in your highlights and keep everything under that 100% white so that it's broadcast legal. Hyper gammas 3 and 4 push the whites all the way up to 109%. So what this does is extend your dynamic range a little bit, give you a little more information to pull detail out of your highlights, but it requires a look in post-production so that you make sure you're not sort of clipping the whites or doing anything on, on an illegal value. So Cliff, great question. Is this Cine Alta? Absolutely, man, absolutely. All right? So let's talk about this 50 megabit recording for a moment. What are you recording that on? Well, just like the EX1 and EX3, it's right here on a, on a standard S by S card. Unlike the Aria Alexa, it's not picky. It'll take S by S cards that end in one, S by S cards that end in pro, S by S cards that end in pro plus. You can even use Sony's SD01 adapter to put inexpensive SDHC cards and record right onto the card. Now, if you are gonna be using 
SDHC cards, I recommend using the 35 megabit codec. They're, they're not all fast enough to handle the 50 megabit per second codec. So uh, another thing that, another way to keep these straight in your mind is once you've recorded in the first codec, 35 megabits per second, FAT, the FAT file system, you cannot shoot 50 megabit per second to the same card. You've actually got to reformat the card, recreate the file structure into the UDF file format so that you can uh, handle the files large enough and the throughput large enough to get that 50 megabit per second codec on your cards. All right? Once you do start recording, as alluded to earlier, there is a very fast transfer time between thumbnail clip viewing and recording. All right? Uh, one major complaint on the EX1 was, oh my god, it takes forever to go from viewing my clips to playing my, to, to recording the next clip. So let's check this out. James, how tight can you get on here? Do I have to move? That's pretty tight. Okay, looks like we're in live camera mode. Uh, I've, j earlier we recorded a couple clips. Let's we'll jump into this thumbnail mode. That took about two and a half seconds, I would say. All right, just to show that there's no uh, funniness, let's play this clip back. So there we are. We're playing back a clip. See my little audio meters, my rehearsal with comedian and rental manager Scott Lenter here. But what if something interesting happens? I am now going to press, check out my right thumb here. From playback mode, I'm gonna just press this record button, okay? Record, you see immediately, I'm back into record mode, so I'm not missing anything that's vital. So that was a super fast switch. Didn't have to change any hardware. Didn't have to change modes from thumbnail to record. We go straight from thumbnail viewing to recording. And if we go back to James for a second, you'll notice right here that my record light is on. All right, pretty pretty slick. Another handy little device, uh, handy little feature that a lot of other cameras share, but you don't find that it's missing in the 200 is cache recording, such that we're always running the record buffer up to 15 seconds, so that should, should you be somewhere like a sporting event or a paparazzi kind of thing and you're waiting for the starlet to walk out of the house and you're sort of sleeping on the job, turn on your cache record. When something happens, you've got up to 15 seconds to hit that record button and it will maintain 15 seconds into the past before, uh, you know, be before you actually hit the button. Very handy stuff if you're in time critical situation. Mr. Alistair Chapman, who wrote an excellent review of the PMW 200, says whenever he shoots a lightning strike, always make sure to turn on that, uh, the cache recording feature so that when the moment he sees the lightning, he hits record, the camera actually goes back in time up to 15 seconds and records all that data right to the S by S card. Pretty handy feature. 